All right, friends, <clears throat> I've removed the sway bar end links. Basically just tapped out this part here from the hole that up there, right? And a little bit about these sway bars, guys. This is a white line 22 mil rear sway bar. Um, it comes with, the kit comes with these extra support brackets to make this whole subframe and uh, sway bar mount a lot stiffer. And it comes with these um, these brackets here to keep your sway bar from moving side to side. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are like wondering, like, should I get a 20 mil upgraded from the 16 that stock or should I go 22 mil? It really depends on what kind of driving you're doing, okay? So in the front, I have a 24 mil, right? And in the rear, I have a 22 mil. I also have coilover suspension. So altogether, this is a pretty tight package. Um, the stock Impreza or the cross trucks come with, you know, uh, a lot softer struts, right? The front of the cross track comes with a 24 because the, the car is much taller. And then when it rolls, you want to keep that um, body roll uh, lessened, right? So they put a rear sway bar in. It's a 16 mil typically, but you can upgrade to a 20 mil STI and or these 22 mils, uh, which are, you know, kind of up the game a little bit. Um, you want to be able to balance the front and rear. Um, if anything, I would just recommend someone try the 20 mil first. It's a hundred bucks. So like, you're not really throwing away money and you can always sell it again, which is what I did until I got the 22 mil. Cause I wanted the rear end a little bit stiffer. Right. And so with sway bars, I want to also mention that when you upgrade the thickness or the diameter of your sway bar, you also need to upgrade the sway bar bushings themselves because you know, the whole you know, for a 20 mil, the 16 mil is going to be like this. And then a 20 mil is going to be like this. And then the 22 mil is going to be like that. Right. So sway bar bushings need to be upgraded as well. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, from the factory. If you have sway bars, uh, they're usually bolted down pretty tight with these, these um, nuts here or these, you know, these nuts or bolts. And what happens is when you move the sway bar up and down, like I'm doing here. Well, you can barely tell, but I'm moving it up and down here, right? I can just use my finger to push it up and down, right? Sometimes these brackets here, they'll pinch the kind of like that C cup that goes on, right? And if it pinches it too hard, this sway bar is not going to not going to move very easily. And if your sway bar doesn't move easily, it actually just counteracts some of your suspension. So I would recommend um, I had to, what I actually had to do was add a slight, small little washer here just to space it off just a hair so that this bracket wasn't pinching the, the sway bar in the bushing, right? So I, I spaced off just a hair and this is fine. This is structurally still good, solid, but um, it allows the sway bar to move freely, right? And so all your suspension components, you want to move freely, right? If it's, if you have to use like a whole like arm to like push it up, it's binding, right? And then when you get binding, your car jacks on like corners and it's not, it doesn't, it's not smooth, right? So you want this to be smooth, right? I can just move this up with one finger and pull it down with one finger, right? So uh, aim for that, guys. Same thing with uh, end links and things like that, right? You don't want any of that stuff to bind. So right now I've just pulled off these sway bar end links uh, so that I can get maximum droop. Let's continue.